Hey there everybody and welcome to my review of the Suzuki Vitara. It's hard to believe that the Suzuki Vitara has been around for more than 25 years and is only in its fourth generation, which means that this iconic little SUV really does stand up against the test of time. Now for 2019 it has had a bit of a midlife refresh with new front and rear end and also a tweaked interior. Now I've had the Vitara for a week to see what makes it such an icon, but not only that, just to see if it does stand up against the new wave of small city crossovers. So come with me to find out. So when it comes to the styling of the Suzuki Vitara, I think we can all agree that it's actually a really handsome car. It kind of looks like a baby Range Rover or even a Vogue. The designers at Suzuki have really got the basics right. It's got a nice square boxy shape, but at the same time it's got curves in all the right places. But let me know what you think. Click up in the top right hand corner and let me know what you think is the best looking smallish kind of SUV. Is it the Suzuki Vitara, the Seat Arona, the Kia Stonic or the Renault Captur? So click in the top right hand corner and let me know. And if there's a car up there that you think is better looking, well by all means click in the comment section below and leave a comment there. But all in all, I think Suzuki have done a brilliant job with the Vitara. I mean, they've kept the basics there and it definitely looks like a funky little SUV, but you can definitely see some purpose to it. But that's enough of the outside. Let's have a little look at the inside. Sat here in the Vitara and the first thing you find with this being an SUV is that you do sit nice and high. So getting in and out of the car is really easy. And that means if you suffer from any kind of mobility issues, this is definitely one car to consider. Also, once you're sat in the driver's seat, you find you've got a really lovely commanding view of the road ahead because you seem to sit a little bit higher than you would do in something like a Seat Arona, for example. Also, there's plenty of adjustment here in the driver's seat and you can get the perfect driving position because the steering has both rake and reach adjustment. So that is a big positive. And on this SZ5 trim, I really do like these seats. You've got suede on the center sections and leatherette on the outer bolsters, and they are very comfortable. However, lumbar support is not included on them. And when it comes to the interior design of the Vitara, you actually find it's a very simple, no nonsense interior. Everything's where you'd expect it to be. And you have got some silver trim here on the center section to liven up the interior. But there is a no nonsense feel about it. And it's very easy to live with. Now you have got an eight inch touchscreen on the center of the dash. And again, it's a nice usable system. It's very intuitive to use. There's no physical buttons on the outside of the screen. You've got some touch sensitive ones, but there's not too many of them. And it is very easy to use, especially when on the move. And you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the system. Now, cubby spaces. It's a little bit hit and miss with the Vitara, but we'll start with the dar door bins. Dar bins? No, door bins. So, I've got a bottle of drink here, which I can fit in the door bins, which is a, of a decent size. However, you're going to cut to uh, a video of me putting a two litre bottle into those door bins and they fit really nicely. I think this is the first time I've come across a car that fits a two litre bottle in the door bin. It's just such a shame that they're not lined with fabric. So if you do chuck any loose items in there, they are going to rattle around a bit. But then underneath the uh, safety buttons on the right hand side, we've got a little stowage area so you can put your phone or a wallet in there uh, but it's again not lined with any fabric so i wouldn't recommend chucking any coins in now in front of the gear lever we've got kind of a double st stacked area where you can put your phone and you can put a couple of little items in there and you've also got a usp uh, socket as well as a 12 volt socket so that is quite handy and useful then behind the gear lever we have got your drive mode select firstly and because this is four-wheel drive or has the all grip system you have got a snow mode you can actually lock the diff as well as well as a sport mode and then we've got two decent sized cup holders however if you put a bottle in the rear one you will find that if you slide the armrest forward you are going to bump it so just be aware of it then we have got a little bit of cubby space underneath the center armrest and it has actually quite a decent and usable space and then we've got the glove box which is of a Actually, it's quite a poor size. We've got the owner's manual in there and that does take up quite a lot of space in there. So that is a little bit of a disappointment. But other than that, those door bins are definitely the big highlight. But it's, yeah, it's not too bad when it comes to interior space and cubby spaces. But all in all, I am actually really liking the simplicity and the no-nonsense feel to the Vitara cabin. Everything's where you'd expect it to be. And as I said, it just feels as though it will stand the test of time especially if it takes a lot of abuse and you do take your Vitara off-road. 
But that's enough of the front of the Vitara. Let's go have a sit down in the back. Sat in the back of the Vitara, things start to get a little bit cozy back here, I would say. So firstly, that driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And as you can see, I've got a good amount of knee room. However, headroom, well, yeah, I'm rubbing my head against the ceiling. And that's because that this top of the range spec comes with a panoramic glass sunroof. If, however, you are looking to take adults regularly in the back of the Vitara, I'd recommend the mid-level spec because you wouldn't have that sunroof and you'd have a little bit of additional head space. But other than that, it's actually not too bad and it's quite comfortable back here. Storage space, again, is a little bit hit and miss. So we have got some very good door bins, which again, I can put my bottle of drink in. However, I've not got a pocket on the back of the driver's seat, but there is one on the back of the passenger seat. How odd. But other than that, that's pretty much it. There's no armrest that you can pull down with any cup holders and there's no through loading into the boot area. You have got Isofix on the outer seats and there's no clips or covers on them. So it means actually fitting a child seat is really easy. And another feature I like is actually that the seatbelt runners go alongside the uh, seats and not against them. So if you do need to put the seats fully flat, it's not going to snag when you put the seats back up again. So that is a nice feature. In terms of interior quality, yes, we have got hard and scratchy plastics, but on this top of the range trim, we have got tinted windows. Unfortunately, they don't go all the way down, but they are of a decent size and they do let a lot of light in, especially the additional window just behind me in the C pillar, which does A, add extra light and B, improve visibility for the driver in the blind spot. So all in all, it is a little bit of a mixed bag sat here in the back of the Vitara. But let's go have a little look at the boot and see what we got there. Opening the boot of the Suzuki Fatara presents you with 375 litres of space, which is roughly the same you get from a Renault Captur. So it's not quite class leading, but as you can see, it's a very usable load bay. You've got virtually no load lip thanks to the variable boot floor. We've got a couple of extra pockets here on the outer sides of the boot area. We've got some shopping hooks, which are just on the edges, along with some tethering hooks if you want to keep anything tied down. We've also got a 12 volt socket in there as well. And then what you can also do is you can actually lift up the variable boot floor and you can store the parcel shelf underneath if you need to load any larger items. And if you do get the seats flat, you almost get a flat load area and it is very useful. So it's actually a perfect all rounder, this little Vitara. It's not too bad when it comes to practicality. Yes, okay, we need a little bit of additional headroom, but all in all, I'm very impressed. And there's one other feature I'd like to show you. So I'll just get this variable boot floor down and we close it. That's actually a locking button. And because I've got keyless entry and go, if I press that, the car's now locked. I think that's a very handy feature. Now let's unlock it and go for a drive. So once you get going in the Suzuki Vitara, first impressions are actually really good. It's a nice, comfortable car. And as I mentioned, because you've got that high seating position, you've got a wonderful view of the road ahead. And in terms of all round visibility, it's actually pretty good when looking over your shoulder. You've got a couple of big windows in the C pillar. So it does allow a little bit of extra light in for your rear passengers, but also means you haven't got too much of a blind spot. There's not too much of a thick A pillar. If actually on the driver's side, it's not too bad. But when you look over on the passenger side, you do see it's quite slab sided. So that is just something to be aware of when you're at certain junctions. But all in all, all round visibility is pretty good. And then as you're kind of driving along, you actually realize the Vitara is a very comfortable car. So I'm just driving along now on a normal A road. There's a little bit of road noise coming into the cabin, not more than I would expect from any other car in this class. There's hardly any wind noise I've actually seen coming off the wing mirrors and engine noise as well is not too bad. If anything, it just does everything really well. It's kind of a jack of all trades. And as I said about the design of the interior and it kind of goes towards the nature of the Vitara. It's just a no nonsense car. It kind of knows what it's designed to do and it just goes ahead and does it. So there are three trim levels to choose from. There's the SZ4. SZT and then the SZ5 which is what I've got here 
and as mentioned it is really well specced out you've got a lot of safety equipment as standard but it is missing a few things that you would imagine you'd get on the car in this class so in terms of things that you do get you do get the panoramic sunroof you do get front and rear parking sensors with a reversing camera i've got blind spot detection lane departure warning you've also got hill descent control because of the all grip uh, 4x4 system that i've got on this particular car but you've got all these safety features, but you're missing things that you would expect, like heated front seats, for example. But to be fair, they're really nice and comfy, and there's not too much leather, so they're not gonna feel too cold when you're driving. But all in all, you actually get a real nice amount of kit with the car, and then, you know, heated seats are really kind of a luxury, and I don't actually feel as though I'm missing out in that respect, especially when you look at the price of the car compared to its rivals. It actually comes away really well compared to them. So when it comes to engines, there are two to choose from, both of them petrol engines and both of them turbocharged, or as Suzuki call them, booster jet engines. One of them is a one litre booster jet with 111 brake horsepower, and the second is a 1.4 litre booster jet, which is what I've got here, with 138 brake horsepower. Now it's actually the engine you can get in the Suzuki Swift Sport, but it doesn't come with all the raspy exhaust notes. And this is actually a really lovely engine. There's plenty of punch when you put your foot down, and I've not driven the one litre unit yet, so I can't say whether or not to go for that one, because you know I'm a big fan of one litre petrol engines, but I am thoroughly impressed with this 1.4 litre booster jet. It's just got oodles of power, and it actually doesn't feel like it's got 138 brake horsepower. It actually feels like it's got about 15 to 20 more. It's really responsive and coupled with the all grip system, it just really wants to pull. It's a very enthusiastic engine. It's got a nice bit of poke to it. So as I mentioned earlier, how I really like the layout to the interior of the Vitara. It's just, there's no major thrills to it. It's just no nonsense. Everything's where you expect it to be. And that even goes for the steering wheel as well. So the buttons on the left-hand side control the infotainment system, like your volume, etc. And on the right-hand side, they control the adaptive cruise control that you get on this SZ5 model. And then underneath, we've got some extra buttons there for your Bluetooth and the voice activation. And then on the right-hand side, we've also got your lane departure assist button. So not only have you got lane departure warning, but you've also got lane departure assist. So coupled with the adaptive cruise control, that's a really nice feature. But there is one button, however, that just seems to be very much out of place and would be at home on a spare button that I can see here on the steering wheel. And that's the trip computer button. It's actually on the right hand side of the dials and it's one of those buttons that you would press when you want to reset your trip uh, computer but this one is actually the trip computer that scrolls through you know your mpg how far you've got and all the uh, other bits of information and it's just put in the wrong place being on that right hand side it's just not as ergonomic as i would like it to be and if they could relocate it somewhere here on the steering wheel it makes it a lot more user friendly particularly when driving so that's the only minor nickel and what i got is actually a really well laid out cabin and bravo to suzuki because well to be honest they didn't have to try too hard but they've actually got themselves a nice pleasant interior and i'm driving along now at 70 miles an hour and i'm actually really comfortable driving along at motorway speeds the only things i'm actually getting kind of coming into the cabin is a little bit of road noise and okay there is a little bit of wind noise coming off those wing mirrors but that's really the only kind of things that are coming into the cabin what is nice is i have got that panoramic glass sunroof which does allow a lot of extra lighting but what's also nice is you have got some light headlining which again just lightens up the cabin so it's yeah it's just a nice a nice pleasant place to be here in the Vitara. I'm actually really liking it. So what's the ride and handling like in the Vitara? Well I'm going to use that term again, it's got a really nice no-nonsense feel to it. It deals with the bumps and imperfections really well even at low speed but some of the bigger manhole covers and potholes do resonate into the cabin. It's not perhaps as refined as something like a say a Rona or a Volkswagen T-Cross, but then again, those are cars that are meant for driving about in the city and in the towns, whereas the Vitara, you can definitely see driving about in the countryside, dealing with more, more rougher roads, so to speak. 
and as a result it deals with those bumps and imperfections really well and the only trade-off is yep there is a bit more lean in the corners but it's not as bad as something like the Subaru Forester I drove earlier in the year it doesn't feel as though you're gonna have passengers feeling seasick in the back of the car there is an element of control and feel to it and as you drive around a corner it just it feels all right it's actually it's a little bit fun at the same time I do think though however in the wet you could push the Vitara a little bit and it might start to understeer and push wide but it would feel very predictable and as a result it would feel very safe and you knew it was happening it's just an all-round nice driving experience in the Vitara and I am really impressed by it coupled with that 1.4 litre booster jet it just makes for a really a really good all-round car now the six-speed manual as well that I've got here has again it's got a nice feel to it there's a little bit a tiny bit of notchiness but it's got a nice mechanical feel to it now this is where the Vitara definitely pulls away from some of its rivals in that it can go off-road and it can deal with tracks like this so a lot of its rivals will be two-wheel drive and what that does is it saves on weight and boosts fuel economy but with Suzuki because they've got that pedigree because they've got that heritage you can get the Vitara with both two-wheel drive or front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive or as Suzuki call it their all-grip system and what I've got it here so I've set the car to snow mode because there's only two modes there's snow and sport of course I definitely don't want sport for this but with the snow you can also lock the four-wheel drive system in place so that way you've got a permanent four-wheel drive system and as a result oh, you can do things in this that you won't be able to do in other cars in this segment now the beeps you heard were actually the front parking sensors because I just went into a little bit of water but you can see here the Vitara is just coping with this absolutely brilliantly and that is a very big string in the Vitara's bow compared to its rivals you can actually deal with some pretty arduous conditions and at the same time it means you can have a bit of extra fun in your Vitara compared to your Volkswagen T-Cross where you probably don't want to get the underside of that dirty or bottoming out at all so this is why the Vitara sells so very well in places in that kind of like the north of England where there's just a lot of poor weather particularly at this time of year and you just need that little bit of extra security and it really does help and it is a lot of fun <laughs> now that I'm back on main roads what are my thoughts on the Suzuki Vitara well I am hugely impressed with how capable the Vitara is both on and off road now when it comes to going off road this is where it definitely beats all of the rivals in its segment because I can't think of another car that can do what this car can do in the price bracket it just dealt with driving off road really well because Suzuki have got that heritage with the Vitara and in terms of going off road it's just a hugely capable car and it definitely explains and shows why the Vitara does so well in kind of in northern England or in rural areas it just it just does everything really well and then when you're driving on road again its road manners are very good yes some of its new arrivals are just a little bit more refined but the compromise would be is that if you don't go off-road then stick with those cars but then again if you really like the Vitara you can go for a two-wheel drive version you don't have to have the all-grip system there's a huge amount of variety to the Vitara and that definitely helps it as well and the fact that you can get two-wheel drive four-wheel drive versions of this car again with manuals and automatics and it just means you can have an incredibly capable car for not too much money that's the thing 
Now, yes, some of its rivals do have more space in the back. That was a bit of a disappointment for me personally because of that lovely square boxy shape. But all in all, the Vitara is a brilliant little SUV. And if you do need something that has off-road capability, you definitely have to look at the Vitara. And if you are after a small crossover or small SUV to take the kids to school and back in, then again, I would consider the Vitara. Definitely have a drive of one and just see what you think of it. But yeah, this is an absolutely brilliant car and the fact that it's got that off-road capability is definitely the highlight for me. And I did enjoy taking it off-road, even though it was only a little country lane but it was again very significant in the fact that no other car in this segment can really do that actually apart from one i've just thought of it and that's the dacia duster but i don't really think it compares to the vitara in that respect so everyone i hope you've enjoyed my review of the suzuki vitara this sz5 all grip with the 1.4 litre booster jet engine if you have got any questions or queries about the car and my time with it, please put them down in the comments section below. Of course, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notifications icon so it lets you know when I bring out another video. Now I'm also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and I do always recommend that you do follow and subscribe on there for additional content including live videos and still images. But again, guys, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. And again, if you've got any questions, put them down in the comments section below. But if not, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.